All right, hey guys, welcome back to this video, uh, video number four, uh, lab 34.4 in D335, Introduction to Programming in Python. I apologize for the absence and for the uh, gap between videos. As you know, with the holidays, uh, Christmas and end of year, New Year's, um, I was just away from, from home, so I di didn't have access to my computer and, to, and uh, wasn't around to be able to record these videos, but now I'm back. And so let's uh, pick right back up. So lab 34.4, uh, data types and formulas. This one's actually very straightforward. It's probably one of the easiest ones. So this one should be, uh, it shouldn't be too much effort. If you've already watched videos one, two, and three, this one will be very familiar. If not, I recommend going back and watching the first three videos. And additionally, uh, make sure to check the descriptions. I went ahead and added my link to inscribe um, Inscribe is basically like a repository which saves different uh, code and I've uploaded my solutions for every single lab. I guess just want to give you a quick walkthrough on how to use Inscribe for WGU. If you've ever programmed before, you should know what GitHub is. It's essentially a repository or a repo where you store your code and other things. But WGU has this platform where you can go and interact with other students and your teachers and course instructors and ask them questions about specific areas of Zybook and about the course. And it's where I've uploaded all my solutions to chapter 34 and all those labs. And so and on any of my videos, just scroll down and open up the, des the description and you'll see something that says go to Inscribe for WGU and you click that link. It'll open up and just click sign in with your WGU email. And it'll open up another page because again it's SSO or single sign-on and where you would then be prompted to sign in with your WGU credentials. Sign in with that and it should take you to something that looks like this. So this is going to take you to my, my profile where you have all my solutions. If you go to contributions you can view all my code so and then you can, you can sort uh, by started and this will show you which ones that I've directly contributed to. So for example, here's a solution for lab 10, for lab 15, for lab 14, 13, 11, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I'm not sure why they're out of order. I'll, I posted them in a different order, in the correct order, but regardless, they're all here. And if you scroll down, uh, I already have, I have one for 28.10, 14.9, uh, and D335, uh, 34.12. Um, which I posted way out of order for some reason, but you can find them all here. And if you click, for example, um, let's go to 34.7 and you can see my script here, my code, and uh, you can just copy the code or highlight it and copy it. And it should work if you paste it into your Zybooks. But that's a quick overview on how to use Inscribe and where you can find different solutions. So jumping right into this one, uh, we're, re we're being asked to create a solution that accepts any three integers uh, that represent the base uh, B1 and B2 and the height H of a trapezoid in meters. We should output the exact trapezoid in square meters as a float value. So the exact area of a trapezoid uh, is calculated and it gives us the formula below to calculate the trapezoid uh, area. And it's a or area equals base one plus base two divided by two times the height of the trapezoid. And so the format below again should be trapezoid area colon space and then it's going to have a variable and then the words the string square meters. And again uh, you can test your input using these. When we test with this we should get this back. Or an alternate input to test with these numbers then you should get this back. So the very first thing we're going to do we want to create three variables and our variables will be base one base two in height or b1 and b2 and h and it, these will store integer inputs so whatever the user types in will be stored to these variables again this one is very straightforward so we'll go ahead and just go with the variable names that they gave us which is b1 and b2 and h so b1 is going to be equal to integer input because this is going to ask the user for input and it's going to save their input as a data type uh, of integers. And so now we move on to B2 for our second variable and the same thing, just ask for user input and save that as a variable 
uh, as an integer data type and then the height. The height is equal again to the integer input. And so that takes care of that. Now we have a way to accept three integer inputs that represent these because these are the variable names and they will accept integer input. So moving forward, to calculate the area, um, we need to create a variable that's gonna store the formula for your area. And again, the reason why we named our variables b1, b2, and h instead of base1, base2, and height is because we can simply go and copy paste the trapezoid formula into our variable here. So we can just name it a, or we can name it area, we'll just name it, um, we'll name it area. And it's gonna set b equal to whatever the formula up here is. So just copy this. And there you go. However, this isn't valid Python code. Uh, you have to come back and change these to parentheses. And so just change that to parentheses. And now you have valid Python code. So again, area equals base one plus base two, divide that by two, and then multiply that by the height. Again, parentheses is important because order of operations matters. And so uh, you wanna have your parentheses in order to make sure that this plus this is being divided by two and not b1 or not b2 alone is divided by two or and you know order order of operations matters in python so make sure your parentheses match to avoid that you know just copy paste that and change these brackets into parentheses and you should be good okay so that's pretty much 90 percent of our code the last thing we need to do is to print the actual result so again using f string formatting you want to make a print function and our our output will be in this format trapezoid area which is a string it's a little string you're going to type out these words we don't have a variable named trapezoid area so literal string uh area area value is essentially what this is area uh we, I, we can go ahead and just name it area value just for congruency but again you can name your variable whatever you want um but that's essentially what this is area value and i actually missed that i've recommended to use the variable names that the prompt gives you just to so you don't have to go with tra uh, chasing around and figuring out what is what you can just plug everything in from the output into your formula but we're going to go ahead and rename area value and so we want to print trapezoid area because again this is a, a literal string it's just the words add a colon because uh it's part of our required output and remember white spacing matters uh, if we don't have a blank here, we can have the right code and the right number. It'll look just, it'll look very similar like it's correct, but it doesn't have that space there, so it'll be marked wrong. So again, make sure to add that space. And an area underscore value isn't going to be a string, it's going to be a variable, which is this variable. So when you're using F string formatting, make sure that you're using brackets, cur curly brackets, where you store your variable. So this is gonna be area value. And so area value, and then finally the words square meters or square meters. And so you don't need to add a, a quotation mark again because we never closed this one off. So square meters. And now finally we can close it off with a closing quotation mark and a closing parentheses. And again, this can your quotation marks can be single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't really matter. I learned with double quotes, and that's what I've been using ever since but feel free to use single quotes. That doesn't actually affect anything as long as you have a closing and an opening uh, quote. So now, once our code is complete, we wanna test our input. And so in order to, to do that, I recommend this for exam, always test your input. The prompt, the question will always give you some sample numbers to, to plug in and it'll give you what it should get back. And so, on the exam, you won't have a submit mode where you hit run and it'll and submit and it'll tell you, hey, uh, two out of five exam uh, test passed, uh, five out of five passed, and your code is good. No, you're gonna have a develop mode, which is essentially a way for you to test uh, those tests. And so let's take this sample input. Again, always go with the input they give you. Test your own different numbers and input, but always at least bare minimum go with what the exam gives you because you're guaranteed to know what it should be. Okay, 
So now we've, you're going to copy paste that or just enter it. And this should be our result trapezoid area colon space 17.5, which should be the variable that's stored in that that's calculated from this and in square meters. Okay, so trapezoid area, colon, space, 17.5 square meters, and is it is indeed our expected output. So it looks like our program is running, but again, we want to test with other inputs. So let's try three, five, and seven. And this would be our expected output, trapezoid area, 28.0 square meters. Okay. So then again, we can just test with different numbers, just make sure we're not getting errors. Again, since these numbers are our own, we don't have a way to confirm uh, other than just calculating it. If you have a calculator during your exam, uh, you can always test that. Okay, yep, so one plus one, B1 plus B2 divided by is two, divided by two is one times the height, which is one, so one times one is one. So yep, that's correct, and it comes back and that is our solution this one is a pr pretty straightforward one um, very easy uh, your pre-assessment or your objective ass assessment uh, very similar it'll give you some it'll have some comments up here again because i've already gone through the solution i deleted comments out but your objective assessment and pre-assessment should have some comments out here that'll give you some good hints and advice and uh, formulas and conversions and just depending on what the question have will have different information use that to your advantage um, on the exam and so this is a very straightforward solution if you have any questions or comments please leave a comment in the section below and i'll do my best to get back to you thank you